What's good? We're back in this thing. So your Instagram feed, it's been lacking, and I'm here today to fix that. You might be wondering, well, why is it so important to have your Instagram feed look good? It's because every client you've ever had has either been to your Instagram in the past or in the future it is going to be. So what we're going to be doing today is taking a bunch of photos that you already have on your camera roll or BTS photos, whatever you got, and turning them into like a seamless carousel effect. You know the vibe. You've seen it before. It's just a bunch of photos that when you swipe left and right on Instagram, they connect. I don't know how to describe it otherwise. Honestly, so far, every single time I see it, I think it's really cool. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making it with some paper rips and it, the assets that we're going to be using pretty fire by the way brindelmata.com you can check it out here i have a code for a little discount if you want to go ahead and snag it for the ultimate texture bundle v2 so let's get into the video all right so now that we're in photoshop you can see that we have a bunch of photos from the dry boy editing contest which by the way has concluded we are done we're going to be watching all of the submissions this friday on youtube on the live streams so be sure to turn on my notification bell i want to make a post on instagram letting people know that i'm going to be live streaming so this is what i came up with so be sure to go to my instagram right now and drop a comment that you're here from the YouTube video in the comments. Let them know your YouTube gang. And uh, yeah, let's run it. So first off, what we need to do is figure out how many slides we want. So Instagram's max resolution for one singular slide is 1080 by 1350. So 1080 pixels wide by 13 pixels high. So depending on how many slides you want, you just multiply that 1080 number by however many slides you want. So for example, say we wanted three slides, we would take that 1080 number and then times that by whatever amount of slides. So say you wanted five slides, you times it by five, three slides, you times it by three. Let's do three. I feel like that's a pretty safe number. There's not too much work going on there, but there's a decent amount of slides and you can get the idea of the concept. So once you multiply that, you get 3240. So for the width, I would go into Photoshop, file, new, and then width, I would type in 3240. And then the height is gonna be that 1350. That's gonna stay the same for all of them. So then when you open that up, it's gonna be a long canvas like this. And the first thing I like to do is separate it so you can see where the cuts are gonna be exactly. So to do that, I go to edit, then preferences, and then down to guides, grids, and slices, click that. It's going to open up this preference area. And where we're going to be looking is this thing called grid. Go ahead and turn the grid every 2% and then 100. And then subdivisions is exactly how many number of slides you want. So if you times it by three, you put three in here. If you times it by five, you put five in here. And then go ahead and click OK. And then if you have the checkerboard pattern, you probably can't even see, but it did put up grids. So let's go ahead and just make a black background so we can see for the sake. Now you can see very clearly there are three segments, one, two, and three. Now basically is the fun part where we just go ahead and add any images we want in to kind of have that slide. So to start off, let's drag in a photo. I think the photos are a little boring by themselves. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is use my ultimate texture bundle and add some paper textures to it just to kind of give it a little bit more depth. And it's really gonna spice up your Instagram feed like this and make it stand out from a lot of other people's. So from the rips and folds pack, I'm gonna be dragging in that black rip one. Let's go ahead and scale that to kind of what we want, just like that for right now looks good. And then what I'm actually gonna do is take that image that we had and drag that above the black rip one and turn that to screen. And just like that, you already see it's having that paper texture, but the issue is there is a border around it, right? So what I'm gonna do is select our photo layer, so the photo of me and Dry Boy here, right click on it, go to create clipping mask, and just like that, it's contained inside of the picture. And now what you can do is control click both of them so they're both highlighted and scale and move them to whatever you think looks good. Let's go ahead and scale this up a decent amount and maybe rotate it like this you know what actually i want that this rip side to be on the left hand side so you can do that really simply by clicking on the black rip one and then just rotating it and then i'm going to also just scale this up a little bit more something like that's looking really good to me so as you can see i left a little bit of the frame not being fully filled up if you're thinking about it in its segments this is the first photo in your carousel the second and then the third so it's still missing a little bit of stuff but that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and add in another photo and we can fill in the gaps as we need. So for this one, let's drag this photo of me shooting down here, scale this up a little bit and we can bring that above that layer or behind whatever you want. And let's also drag in another one of those paper texture assets. So you can really choose whatever one you think looks good. Let's drag this one in. I think it has a cool look to it. Again, drag in our image above, right clicking, create clipping mask. And now we need to go to screen. So it has that paper texture overlay over it. And then let's scale it up, fill out that area and let's repeat position our image because I noticed our image is kind of like out of frame. So what I did here is I just selected it on the image layer and now I'm just clicking and dragging it around so it fits the frame of it a little bit better. So something like that's looking good to me already. And then let's go ahead and do one last image. So three main images and then we'll add some like texture kind of images, add a little bit extra to the video. And let's drag this last photo in. And then again, just dragging in one of those paper textures and scaling it 
down a little bit so it fits the image, drag in our image above it, create clipping mask, and then go to screen. And then I'm just gonna scale, first off, just the black rip itself so it fits a little bit better. Maybe something like that. So now if you can imagine real quick, these slides being cut off here, instead of three boring images, we have three separate images with some paper textures on them. And it kind of entices the viewer to check the next slide because they're already seeing something peeking out from behind it. Now, one thing I would do to kind of add a little bit of depth is I'm gonna double click on the black rip, this one right here, and go to drop shadow and turn that on. And now we can play around with the drop shadow. You can see if I make it really noticeable, you'll see that we get something crazy, but let's go ahead and turn down the spread and the size just so there's a little bit of that shadow. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit just so we can see what we're doing. It's always easier to zoom in and kind of see what you're messing around with. So something like that looks good. I'm going to turn down the opacity to maybe something around 50 to 70. It really depends on your images. I want to apply it to this one too. So what you can do is copy layer style. So right click on your black rip that you just added that drop shadow onto. Right click, go to copy layer style, and then go to your last one and click paste layer style. And just like that, it looks like there's three separate pieces of paper being stacked on top of each other. And you can always go and right click, go to blending options and change and edit any of these different layer styles. I personally just stick with drop shadow most of the time, but you can go ahead and add on anything else you want. Now, before we add on any of the other little images, let's go ahead and add on some tape just to kind of give it that aesthetic really sell the overall effect. So I'm going to drag in this masking tape one. Now let's go ahead and drag it up here, something like that. So the viewer instantly knows that it's on a piece of paper with some tape. And so I'm just going to fill out these black areas where there's a little bit missing with those tape assets. So go ahead and drag on another one and I'll drag it up here. I think adding these little corner assets really do add like an extra final touch on this to kind of just make it look a little more like whole and seem like it actually belongs there. I'm going to go ahead and add on one of these down here, and then we can fill this area with a photo later. So let's go ahead and add on those extra photos. That way it really sells the split apart effect. So I actually do have photos from all of these different scenes that I'm showing here. So what I'm going to do is just add one photo from each scene to make it look a little bit better. Let's start off by dragging in this image and let's scale it to roughly what we want, and then we can fix it later. Again, bringing in one of those paper assets. I think it just blends the overall image just so much more having these paper textures. Uh, create clipping mask, and then let's also turn that to screen and scale it up just like that. And I'm control clicking on both of those so I can go and move them around. Do want the majority of the image to be in this frame. That way we can kind of see what we would be looking at in that photo. So that looks good. And let's finish that one off by adding in some tape just to make it look realistic, like it's taped on there. So I just scaled it down a lot. Let's go ahead and put one right here. And then also dragging in another one. And then just on this side here. And then again, pasting that layer style that we still have copied. That way there's just a little bit of drop shadow and you can see the separation from the image and the background. It's not necessary, but I do think it adds a little bit to the image overall and helps sell the effect. Then I want one of these fisheye images, maybe somewhere up here to fill that black area as well as show what we'd be looking at. Let's go ahead and add one of these black rip ones that we haven't added on before. Maybe something like this one. Bring our image above. You know the deal by now. Create clipping mask, turn it to screen. Pretty damn simple. Scale up our image so it's not, with this one, it's a little weird because it's a fisheye, so there's a lot of like black space. So I'm just gonna scale it up a lot. Maybe something like that looks good. And then I'm gonna add that layer style with the drop shadow as well as some tape. Let's go ahead and use the blue tape this time just to change things up a little bit. Drag in another one of those blue tape pieces, scale it down. Let's put it somewhere around here. I just realized this really isn't even into the third frame. So what I'm gonna do is just control click all of these and move this over to the right a little bit. That way you get a little bit of that image into the third frame. And then lastly, let's add in that last and final image. Find something that looks good from our photos. I like when he's holding the skateboard. Maybe that one right there, 1557. Drag that in. One last of those rips and folds. Let's go ahead and use one. It's maybe a little bit more distorted just so you guys can see what that looks like. And then going into the tape pack, let's use the duct tape this time. We gotta scale this down a lot. The reason they come in so big is because they are in 4K, like so they're super high quality. If you are working in like a 4K canvas or whatever, you'll be able to use it pretty easily without losing any resolution. But the only thing is when you drag it into smaller canvases like this, it's just bigger so you have to scale it down. It's not that big of a deal. Just thought I would mention that. And let's add in one last tape asset. 
And just like that, we have the full canvas done. Now all we have to do is export these into three separate images. And in Photoshop, it's actually really, really simple if we already have these grids enabled. So if you already have these grids enabled, it's actually really, really easy to export. What you're gonna wanna do is find the slice tool. It's underneath the crop tool. So if you click and drag, you should be able to go to the slice tool. Or if you press Shift C on your keyboard, it should cycle through all the tools. And we wanna have the slice tool or the tool that looks like this. It's like a knife. And just click up here in the top left and drag roughly to where that bar ends. And if you scroll in, you should be able to drag left and right. And if you have snap to grid enabled, you should be able to zoom in and snap it right to that grid. So it's exactly 1080 pixels. And if it's not snapping to the grid really easily, go to view up in the top here, go to snap to, and then just select all. And it should just have your thing snap to it easily. And now you can see there is, if you zoom in in the top left of this, you can see there's a little O1. I don't know if you can see how well the recording's gonna pick it up, but there's an O1 up there. And now we just need to make an O2. So click and drag in that same area. And all you have to do is zoom in, make sure it's snapped to that grid. And then on the left-hand side as well, make sure it's snapped there. And now there should be a second one. And then let's do that last and third one here for us. Make sure it's snapped to that grid. And then when you're exporting this, it's actually really important that you go to file, go to export, and then save for web legacy. And then I'm gonna use JPEG, you can use PNG. I think JPEG's fine. I'm gonna turn the quality up to 100 here and then zoom out just making sure it has all three of these selected. So if you click on it, it'll show you which each slice is gonna look like. You can see here, we have all three of them properly selected and then go to save. It's gonna have you save somewhere. So I'm gonna name the file name Instagram slides, then go to format, make sure it's images only, and then slices, make sure it says all slices, click save, and it's gonna export those images into three separate images. So you'll see it'll make a folder here. And if you click, double click on the images, it's gonna have it named Instagram slides 01, 02, and 03. You can go in full screen and make sure that they all fit. And this is what each slide is gonna look like. So if you wanna change something, you can go back into Photoshop, change it and re-export it. For us, this looks really good. And now all you have to do is transfer it over to your phone. And then once you're on Instagram, go ahead and create a new post and then make sure you use these arrows in the bottom left to scale it up so it fits the full screen. And then click these three squares and just make sure that they go in order. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, and now you can click next. And as you can see, you can scroll here. This isn't the one we had, but this is, this is the one I already transported it over to my phone. So now you can see we have the seamless transition. There are black bars here right now on Instagram, but once you go ahead and click next and post, it will go ahead and make it seamless and then you won't be able to see the gaps in between. Also, if you're watching this video right now, the Instagram post is live. So go ahead, go to my Instagram, click follow and comment YouTube gang or something along the lines of you're from the YouTube video. If you're wondering how I transfer photos over from my computer to my phone without air dropping, I just use Dropbox. It's a really good alternative. There's WeTransfer, Dropbox, Google Drive. You can air drop there's a bunch of different options so just look into whatever you think looks best you can even email it to yourself but yeah guys that's pretty much all i got for you guys in this one if you made it all the way to the end like always i do appreciate you if you haven't already like comment subscribe do all that youtube stuff be sure to go cop that ultimate texture bundle v2 i'll have it pop up right here with a discount code so if you wanted to go ahead and snag that at a discounted rate you do that support the channel it's the best way to do that and also get some really high quality assets but yeah guys that's pretty much all i got for you guys in this one peace